on the Essex coast, between the village of Chelmbury and the ancient oyster fishing hamlet of Wickeldroth, lies a great marsh. It was one of the last wild places in England. It was desolate, lonely, made lonelier by the cries and calls of the sky children who made it their home. One spring in the 1930s, a man came to the abandoned lighthouse at the mouth of the Aelda. He bought the light and many acres of marsh. This man lived alone. He was a painter of wild birds and for his own reasons had withdrawn from society. For he was a hunchback, his left arm withered, the hand malformed like the claw of a dead eagle. But his face radiated a strange intensity. His name was Philip Ryder. One day, three years after he had come to the marsh, a child approached the lighthouse. A girl no more than twelve. In her arms, a white bird, red with blood. Sportsman, 
Ryder knew their mark well. At first, the girl hesitated at the sight of his malformed body. Are you the man that mends broken birds? He smiled. Gently, she handed him the injured creature. The bird was a rare stranger to these shores, for she was a snow goose from a faraway place. A sky princess. The girl watched in wonder as the strange man cleaned the wounds, strapped the wing, and splintered the leg. For the first time, he observed the girl. She was willow slender, Saxon yellow hair, ill clad, dirty, but under that dirt, as beautiful as a marsh fairy. She told him her name Fritha. Through that winter, Ryder tended his wild birds and the snow goose mended slowly. Sometimes the girl would visit them, and when she left, he missed her.
spring came haunting the marsh. The snow goose's wounds healed, and Ryder placed her with the other wild geese in his compounds. He observed that though graceful in flight, her goose walking was remarkably comical. Fritha's visits and the snow goose had brought a new meaning to Ryder's life. Time passed. Then, one June morning, the great geese flocks were answering their timeless call to migrate, and with them went the snow goose. With the going of Snow Goose, so it was with Fritha. The year aged. Autumn cried her leaves to the ground. Daily, Ryder watched the sea wall and the sky, hopefully waiting, waiting. It is mid-October the following year, a northeast wind foams the sea. The land sighs under the winter tide. Then, high in the sky, another sound? Snow goose!
When the news reached Fritha, she came running along the sea wall, and for the first time in a year, this strange trinity was together. That winter was a happy one for Ryder. Fritha would watch him paint, and sometimes she cooked for him. Other times they just walked by the grey, beckoning sea. Walking, talking, alone by the sea. Seeing, being timeless and free. Sharing the sounds of land, sea and sky. Walking, talking, just Fritha and I. Spring came. Chicks turned to fledglings and learned to ride the currents of heaven. Came June and Snow Goose took her wings to a distant land and Fritha ceased her visits. Summer wed autumn and grew their winter child. Life became emptier for Ryder. His thoughts frequently returned to the girl, and sometimes in the darkling night, he thought he could hear her voice. Fritha! Fritha! The new year, an infant of hope, peace and plenty. But beyond the English seas, a black shadow fell across Europe.
winter, Ryada from memory painted Fritha as he had first seen her holding the snow goose. Strangely, that year the Sky Princess did not return. These three lives had fallen into a curious natural rhythm. Only when the snow goose came did the girl visit, and without them, life for Ryada became very lonely. The answer to his loneliness was coursing the night sky. Ryder ran out into the snow-covered marsh. Looking up, he saw white wings beating across the moon. Fritha came this time, Ryada saw that the girl in her was gone. In her place, a young woman.
Nature's brief for Ryada appeared to have been solitude, but that was past. Those months from winter to spring for him were child's magic. Fritha's laughter, the green-grey of her eyes like sea fret. Snow Goose became dog tame, coming into the lighthouse and trying to hold conversation. Fine weather, a sunlit, light-leaping sea, Ryder and Fritha sailed together in his little boat. Birds migrated early that year. Like the rest of the world, they were ill at ease. But across the sea, Europe was burning.
Strangely, the snow goose did not leave. She's going to stay, Philip. Somehow the spell that the bird had girt about them was broken. There was no going away any more. Suddenly, Fritha was afraid, and that which made it was the look in Ryada's eyes, deep, welling, unspoken things. I must go? She was far away before she dared a backward glance. He was standing on the sea wall, a dark, lonely speck against the evening sky. Though they did not know it, the story of Snow Goose, Fritha and Ryder was fast drawing to an end. It was the night when Fritha next came to visit. She found Ryder feverishly preparing his boat to sail. In tumbling words, he told her, the British army, men on beaches, trapped like wounded birds. Dunkirk! Survivors told many stories, but none so strange as of a small boat and a hunchback defying all dangers, of men saved, then the mine, and flying over the dead boatman, a goose, a great white snow goose. Thank you. 
For days, Fritha waited at the lighthouse. She fed the birds. But long before the snow goose came dipping out of a crimson sky in a last farewell, Fritha knew that Philip Ryder would never return. The Trinity had shattered on the glass of war. She faced the open sea and said what he had always known but never heard. I love thee, Philip. I love thee. On the Essex coast, between Chelmbury and the ancient oyster-fishing hamlet of Wickeldroth, lies the Great Marsh. It is one of the last wild places in England. Desolate, lonely. Made lonelier by the calls of those who have made it their home.